Born and raised in Columbus, Ohio. My family's really between Columbus and LA, the LA area. So I actually was building the company in LA and moved back to Columbus because we were able to attract significant amount of venture capital and investors to Columbus because really at the time in 2016, there just wasn't many black women or black people starting companies. And the VC industry was getting really hit hard talking about how they discriminate and how biased they were. So they were like dying to find good black founders so they can say, hey, look at us, we have, we got a black, you know? And so that's kind of what happened. I had a very, very solid business model, got out of Techstars, but then I went back to Ohio so that, you know, in retrospect, I was definitely the token black person. (laughs) I hear you. Okay, so you got to talk to me because this is not my world, so I, I'm going to learn as much in this interview as anybody who listens to it on iTunes, Spotify, or any of the other streaming services or watches it on YouTube. So just bear with me for a second. You're in tech. Yes. But what's your background? What's your education like? Were, were you groomed for this industry or did it just happen? That's funny. It, it kind of did happen, but I did go to school for it. So when I went to college, I went to the Ohio State University, go Bucks, and I studied journalism and, um, and marketing. And then I also had a minor in African and African American studies because that's my passion. But I really, I really wanted to be MTV VJ. That's the truth. I wanted to be like Lala. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm about to get this degree and I'm going to go to New York and I'm about to be on Total Request Live, like period. <laughs> so... You know, as I was working towards my degree, I had to get a job in my field, so which was news media. Mm -hmm. And I got a job at the local television station just so I could have it on my resume, build relationships, of course, as you do when you're in college. But the job they gave me was not working in like production or working on the news desk. They gave me the job to work the internet desk doing FTP. Now, if anybody is as old as me, you know, they know the FTB is how you to transfer things online, you know, it's a protocol. And what was happening back then was that it was the first station in Ohio to upload news to the internet. So this is the very beginning of like streaming and it wasn't live streaming. There was no such thing as live streaming yet. It was just, you can watch the news later, but no one really knew how to do it. So they gave me the task of figuring out how to do it and working that, that task every day. And I realized like, wait a minute, If I have tech skills, I have an advantage over everybody in this newsroom because the only people that knew how to do what I was doing was the IT guy, which everybody had like one IT guy back in the day. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, me, he trained me. And I said, I should go back to school and get some tech skills to add to my toolkit for the job force. It was never like, I want to be an entrepreneur. I didn't really think about that. And so I decided to go just to DeVry, like literally I'm in Columbus, Ohio. And I Google, like, how do you get tech skills? Like, you know, they have those commercials. Remember, we will always see DeVry, ITT Tech, and all of these mm-hmm. random, like, you know, go to get some skills. So I said, okay, well, I want some tech skills. So I'm going to go take this year-long bachelor program just to learn skills to enhance my ability to get a better paying job in the media industry. Because at the time, they were paying, like, starting out 20000 Even back then, that is not what I was trying to get paid, like, even though it was 20-some years ago. So that's how I got into tech, realizing that, you know, between AOL sending out instant messenger CDs all over it, you got free, you know, download instant messenger. I just seen it taken off and I didn't understand what was happening, but I knew it was the future. You know what I mean? I got that feeling like something big's happening and I don't want to get left out. You know, I think it's so dope. I want to point out something you said. Here you are, you thinking that your your future is going to lie in front of the camera. You're going to be a VJ on uh, TRL, MTV, you're gonna be the next Lala Anthony. But in doing your day job, you were able to identify a white space. Hey, there's only one person here who is an IT guy. He's the only guy who I who understands tech. And now I'm understanding it. So if I go and I enhance my skill set, it's going to make me invaluable. At the time, I'm assuming you're thinking at that company, but still in all, I think that, and maybe this is a trait of entrepreneurs, it's a trait of very successful people, but in the moment, 
to identify the area in need, identify where you can stand out and excel, even if it wasn't your chosen path. I think that that's so great that you pointed that out, Dawn. Thank you. I mean, I was looking really like, how can I give myself a competitive advantage when mm -hmm. there's so many people who want my spot? And you know, it's like, you know, it's like any industry, you got to get in the door somehow. So I'm like, if I get in the door as in the tech department, I could at least be there. So when they need, hey, somebody need to do produce production, somebody, hey, we, the, 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 the reporter called off, go cover this story, <laughs> waiting for my shot. You know what I mean? I just knew if I could get into the station because back then it was so hard to get into the media industry at all. And especially in front of the camera. But when I went to school, that's when I realized like, oh, wow, these jobs pay way more than any media job is going to ever pay me unless I am actually La La Anthony. And that's going to take me a while to get to those six figure checks. Meanwhile, the tech in the tech um, business development space, they were starting out in the analyst spot, like 50,000 right out. And this is again, this is in 2000 mm -hmm. year 2000. So that was a high salary for a 20 year old in the year 2000. I Absolutely. Mean, general, like I was living amazing <laughs> back then. So that's why I changed. You know, once I got into school for tech, then again, once again, in school at tech, and they're like, hey, we're looking for interns. Now keep in mind, I'm in this tech program, no women, no black people at all. And they're coming to our class recruiting because back then in 2000, companies were dying for engineers and people that knew tech. Every company that we know had to get email, had to get servers, intranet, moving their whole business from paper. When I started my job, they literally were sending out fax blasts. That was literally fax blasts, no email blasts, fax blasts. So somebody had to move them into the digital age and they were hiring like crazy. So I got an internship and my internship was like $15 an hour, which to this day, people don't even make that yep. a lot. And so I'm like, wait a minute, the money is just too good. I'm about to switch my whole career. And I mean, that's literally exactly what I did. I loved the money and I loved knowing things that were coming. I love like having that inside scoop that like knowing tech, understanding technology, understanding what's the future, what's coming up, being able to speak this language that was very rare at the time, especially in my community. But once again, I'm black female and in Ohio, but I'm in tech. And it just led me to then starting my very first tech company in 2001, which was a media platform. So I stayed close to my heart in media, mm -hmm. but I realized like, wait a minute, I can code now. I can build tech. I can build infrastructure systems. I can do all these things with computers, but I'm 21 years old. What am I going to do with it to benefit my life besides just at work? And I started looking at all the use cases. You want to ask me something? Yeah. No, go ahead. go ahead. I started looking at all the use cases and I'm like, there's so many things we can do with this tech, but nobody's using it in my community. And again, I, I just graduated from my undergrad and I was, you probably remember the days when the only way to find out what's going on is from a flyer, like a physical piece of paper, <laughs> a hot card, or, you know, word of mouth, or in the newspaper, sometimes they would have like a weekender edition. And all the young people at Ohio State and in the city were like, we want to find out what's going on. We want to know what's the cool thing to do, the new clubs, parties, concerts. So I started a website and it was the first of its kind besides at the time, only one thing out there was Social Step, which was based in DC. And then they started building up like Atlanta started building up event websites. Like I think ATL Picks popped up around that time, a couple years later. But other than that, there were not any directories of events going on for young people to find out or people in general, what to do, what restaurants, what parties, what you know, nightclubs, a listing online. That was like literally one of the first. It was called the Urban Star and it grew really fast. We got over 100,000 hits a month. We were we had over 12,000 people on our email list. And back then, the only way to get an email list was to get the actual email written down. Mm -hmm. So I had a street team. Cause again, I came from like promotions and marketing. So I got a street team. I seen this working in the music business. I said, okay, let's turn this into, you know, tech business too and got the girls out with some belly shirts and some sequin t-shirts and asking people, can we have your email address to put you on our list to find out about events in 12,000 people. And I personally hand typed all those emails into an Excel and I copied and pasted them every single Friday. I spent five hours on every Friday, copying and pasting, you know, emails into a BCC and AOL because there were no such thing as an email management client back then. There was no MailChimp, there was no constant contact, there was no, None of that. And so that was my real start in tech, just 
solving my own problems, figuring my way through it. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.